now I'd like to talk about number theoretic functions. These are the same idea of a function as we've talked at, about before, where every input has exactly one output. However, these are not linear or exponential or quadratic or any of those types of things. Uh, this first function, ev of n, I'm going to say is the number of positive even numbers less than or equal to n. This sqn function is the number of positive perfect squares less than or equal to n. And n, with an exclamation point, n factorial, is n uh, times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. These are some number theoretic functions that you may have seen. Um, I'd like for you to make a table and a graph uh, for each of these functions using the natural number domain from 1 to 10. I'd like for you to determine what the domain and the range are for these functions in general and also talk about why these are called functions. So this function ev of n is a counting function. It counts the number of even numbers less than or equal to n. The function sq of n is a counting function. It counts the square numbers less than uh, n. Another function that counts is uh, the, this pi of n. It counts the number of prime numbers less than or equal to n. And so what I'd like for you to do is make a table and a graph of pi of n using the domain of natural numbers from 1 to 20. With ev of n and sq of n, those functions have predictable patterns. ev of n uh, bumps up a value every two things. sq of n, every time you hit a perfect square, it goes up and there's a predictable pattern. Uh, however, pi of n, the counting of those primes, doesn't really have a predictable pattern. What do you suppose the limit of pi of n is as n goes to infinity? That is, how high or what's the behavior of that counting the prime number, the number of prime numbers function? It turns out that the limit of that function is infinity as n goes to infinity. Uh, there is no largest prime number. So earlier we talked about the largest known prime number, but that's not the biggest prime number. We just don't know any that are bigger than that. In other words, there's an infinite number of primes and Euclid proved this a few thousand years ago. One version of uh, Euclid's proof goes like this. If we assume that the number of primes is not infinite, say we have a finite number of primes, write them all on a list, and then we multiply all of those primes together uh, and we get some other number, capital N. Now this capital N is divisible by every prime in the list because that's how we made it. If we add 1 to N, um, then N plus 1 is not divisible by any of those primes because it always has a remainder of 1. So therefore, either n plus 1 is prime, or if it's not prime by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, it's divisible by primes, but it's divisible by a prime that's not on the list. Either way, we don't have a complete list of primes in the first place. And therefore, we'll say there's an infinite number of primes. We can use Euclid's method to generate prime numbers. If Say we start with 2. 2 is prime. Uh, so 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 is prime, so we add it to our list of primes. So now our list of primes is, contains 2 and 3. We multiply those two together, 2 times 3, add 1, we get 7. 7 is a prime number, we add that to the list. Um, now 2 times 3 times 7, those 3 primes we know, uh, plus 1, we get, 20, we get 43. 43 is prime, so we put that on the list of primes. Now we take 2 times 3 times 7 times 43 and add 1, we get 1,807. 1,807 is not prime, it's composite, but its prime factorization is 13 times 139. So we'll put both 13 and 139 on our list. Now we take a product of 2, 3, 7, 43, 13, and 139, add one and we get some larger number, 3,263,443. And this process can go on forever. 
that's how we know that there's an infinite number of primes. Here are some answers to exercises. And some number theoretic function tables for ev of n, sq of n, and pi of n, counting the primes, less than or equal to n.